Hey guys, what's up? It's Wolf here, one only, and today we're going to be going over the patch notes and starting up the tier list voting. Uh, man, it's been a long week in getting claimed for all of my old Dragon Blaze videos. Literally, they claimed my episode 26 videos after like a year or two now. Yep. Ah, good old YouTube. Great. Anywho, today we're going to go to the patch notes and see what's coming. So what's coming tonight? Ah, Sloth is coming tonight and Envy. Alright, cool. Let's go over Sloth stuff. This is actually pretty damn small. I wish they wouldn't have done this. <laughs> that would have been, you know, great. I think they vertical was... A lot better. I can't even zoom into this. So, I uh, you know what? Let me go find the forum. I think that would be a lot better at this point, to be honest. All right, so we're on the forum now. Way better to see. So sloth, rogue, physical, DPS. Beast swallows its opponent's buffs. Plus two enhanced effect. I guess it just removes buffs and attacks. So I'm guessing the beast attacks with her is what I'm guessing it's trying to say. Can still self and beast for 10 seconds. While concealed. Oh, sloth and beast are invincible for 10 seconds. Is the first skill. It does no damage. Alright, second skill. Remove buffs from one enemy. Oh, removes all buff for one enemy. Deals damage if the damaged enemy is not a boss type. Cancel recovered skill cooldown. As a side effect, one of the party members will receive the same effect. Wait. Huh? If the damaged enemy is not a boss, cancel recovered I might be thinking differently on how this is supposed to go, but if somebody can actually explain that one to me, that would actually be cool because I don't get that one too well. That was translated a little bit weird. But third skill inflicts damage and fixed damage to all nearby enemies. And all enemies, except bosses, are airborne for 3 seconds. Alright, basically like a stun in a way. Increases skill cooldown by 20% for all enemies, excluding boss types. As a side effect, all party members receive the same... Yeah, so basically she debuffs the enemy team and yourself. So... Yeah, Sloth is pretty much an endangerment to her own team as much as she is to the enemy team. Unless there's a way to remove this effect. If there is a way to remove the effect on your team, then, you know, it kind of cancels it out. We've... Discord is... People in Discord have talked about this. I've talked about it with them. Of how Sloth could come into play pretty good if she can... If you can be able to remove her stuff. Or if you have Helios. To cancel that out she can actually be really good and dangerous all right first passive use the first skill upon entering the battle without cooldown can seal uh, seals all enemies and party members from using active skills so she's basically like a uh, Mika to be honest because Mika just stuns everybody but herself and one opponent for her she's just stunning everybody Except for herself. Well, canceling everybody's skills except for herself. So, no much different for Mika. This effect cannot be removed. Okay, so it can't be taken off. Also, permanently decrease uh, cooldown recovery speed by by ten percent for enemies and allies. This effect is removed only when Sloth dies. 
Okay. Nah, not that bad. Still kind of dangerous to the team, though. <laughs> oh my god, she's just making everything more hell for like skills, if anything. All right, second passive. When sloth is not concealed, use scare me passive. Okay, during the scare me passive, sloth increases attack speed for all party members by 100% for 10 seconds. This effect cannot be removed. Increases normal damage received to all enemies. Okay. Pretty nice. That's actually not that bad. Increases your damage, your fixed damage, and your physical damage. So that can actually be really dangerous too for a passive. Alright. So enhanced skills. Increases normal damage received. Is that to enemies or to self? Skills, so much work. <laughs> Increases received damage. Wait, huh? Okay. I'm guessing this is. Oh, okay, I see. I see. It's just different inside of different, like, arenas. I was so confused. I was just like, hold on here. There's things going on. New things I don't like. But, yeah, I think it's to herself she receives this much damage. But, also, she never misses in League Battle. So, that just means you're taking all of her damage full on. Which can be really dangerous if you have a rogue with high damage not missing a single shot. So, to be honest, I think she's really good. It's just that if you can deal with the cooldown effects on your team, then she's actually really useful. Alright. Ultimate Enhance. Decreases active skill damage on all enemies and party members, excluding bosses. This effect cannot be removed until Sloth dies. On this one, Sloth never misses an arena. Okay, that's also terrifying. <laughs> so you would have to hope you kill her first or she kills you guys. All right, Arch Enhancement. When hit, 10% chance for beasts to go berserk and go on a rampage. Removes all removable buffs from all enemies, excluding bosses. Inflicts damage to all enemies and stuns them for 5 seconds. Cannot be removed and cannot be evaded. Oh, Ha ha. That could actually be really nice. Inflicts, okay. So this one is the same thing. Oh yeah! Okay, I totally forgot. You do get normal skills. You do get the enhanced, like, passives. So you automatically receive these now. It's just when you get to max enhance, this turns into... Well, this turns into this. You already have this one. It just turns into this once you get her to ultimate. You already have this, and it just turns to this once you get to that. Okay, yeah, I totally forgot about that. I don't know how I forgot about that, but yeah, you already get those by like default. At least I think that's how it goes now. I do have a character I can take a look at that on. Appreciate it, thank you. Okay, I get it, go away. If I remember correctly, you do. Yep, okay. Yeah, I was right. You get these by default now. I totally forgot about that. That is a my bad. So instead of 10% chance, it's a 30% chance. And instead of 
you know, this much damage it adds on another 2,000. And it stuns them for seconds. <laughs> I guess they forgot the numbers, you know, Dragon Blaze has quite a bit of typos. A lot of them, actually. Alright. And during the Rampage, all attacks are crit hits for all party members for 10, for 10 seconds. Okay, that's actually really good, to be honest. Okay. So, Infinity Skill. Upon entering the battlefield, turns back all ally and enemies skill cooldown to the state that was not recovered and begins battle um that's weird that's not applying to bosses permanently decrease skill recovery by 50% for all enemies in allies Jesus Christ um stop skill recovery for 10 seconds for all for all enemies damaged by don't touch me. Also, if the beast goes berserk. That happens, okay. All allies receive the same debuff as an unfortunate side effect. <laughs> also decreases active skill damage for all party members. Okay, so it's basically just like fuck all skills. <laughs> Increases noble attack of all of all party members increase normal time okay so it increases everything oh my god basically just straight up fuck all skills dude i can see how she sloth you know just basically too lazy to actually use skill or magic at all just rather normal attack if anything a lot more simple <laughs> i see it all right then Oh, dude, that's gonna be a pain in the ass to deal with, especially Infinity. For both sides, if anything. But it's basically whoever does the best, you know, normal damage at that point. That actually could be good team with Violet, because Violet mostly goes off her, um... Passives. Alright. So, Envy, our... Fallen Priest. She's also a physical, a healer, and for a normal attack, she either inflicts damage on one enemy or recovers one ally. Alright, first skill, which is magic. You know, hey, I'm not gonna judge. Apparently, she's physical with magic skills. You know, not gonna talk about it. <laughs> Alright, Envy transfers all buffs. Oh, okay, she hits one enemy, transfers all those bombs from that enemy to herself, inflicts damage, and life steals that HP. Well, life steals that attack to an ally. Pretty nice. Second skill Jelly Sidol gets on the back of one party member and restores their HP for 12 seconds. Okay. During the piggyback ride for the Jealous Doll, increase attack for a party member and decreases AoE damage received. The effect of piggyback ride for Jealous Doll cannot be removed. Oh, okay, so this effect cannot be removed basically once the Jealousy Doll is on there. Okay. Not half bad. Not half bad. So basically, life still. Takes all buffs, no buff removal. Didn't say for um, excluding bosses, so I guess you can take boss buffs too. But then again, I've never seen that. So yeah, I'm guessing not. <laughs> Alright. Third skill. Seals one enemy with the highest attack, excluding bosses for 12 seconds and absorb. 30% of the seals, ooh, of the sealed uh, enemies HP, but I'm still pretty sure that's excluding bosses though. So yeah, yeah, this doesn't work on bosses. That would be amazing if it did. Okay, so basically life still again, but it goes to everybody.
So not good for bosses. Mostly good for other things other than boss fights. Noted. Alright. So she's basically doing the same thing as uh, Blaze Eater. Taking a certain amount of uh, HP and giving it to the whole team. By that much that's absorbed. Yeah, not bad. Alright. First passive. Alright, so when using the first or second skill, decrease AoE attacks and ignoring immunity and evasion due to Envy's jealousy. This effect can be stacked up to 10 times. Does not apply to bosses and increases the AoE per level. So I'm guessing this is all goes to enemies. Decreasing AoE damage towards ourselves and ignoring defense skills don't count and decreasing their evasion is what I'm guessing here since it does not apply to bosses I'm guessing this is all aimed towards enemies they mm, translation is weird but yeah second passive permanently decreased receive AOE damage from all okay so AOE, AOE skills are basically useless when Envy's on the field so she permanently decreases AOE damage for all enemies and party members excluding bosses so wait hold on since this doesn't work for bosses we can still do AOE damage <laughs> AoE damage the bosses like pretty normally it's just that those bosses can't do like AoE damage to us as well so that could actually make her pretty good if that's where this is going if I'm reading that wrong if I am reading that wrong you guys let me know okay C try and correct me this is pain in the ass to deal with <laughs> all right so recovers 5% of all allies HP every second something that that um that what was it that orc on the wolf used to do for sure he was actually pretty good back then when DFIs were good <laughs> anywho max passive using the third skill increase single target damage for all party members stacks up to five times and cannot be removed when it's at max enhance increase Increase the what? I have no idea what that says. Increase the whatever the fuck of the enemy's HP that is absorbed <laughs> upon using the third skill. It additionally increases the single target damage for all party members. Oh, that's a mount. Okay. Increases the amount of enemy HP that is absorbed by 50% during using the third skill. I have a lot of questions. Increases the single target damage of all party members. The effect increase for single target damage is only up to only stacks up to five times. Also increases the receive amount for all allies and decreases the AOE damage received. Okay. Increases heals by 12%. <laughs> Short, sweet, and simple for for the ultimate passive. Oh, and then it changes. <laughs> it changes to her inflicting damage every second the enemy is near a sealed character. So, the third seal does Seal the person with the highest attack. So the person with the highest attack, whoever that is that is sealed, is going to be basically spreading damage to the rest of the party. Increases the hills for all party members. This effect cannot be removed. Also, if he's protected 
Envy protects her precious life. Increases HP recovery. She used by is 5% and decreases damage and AoE damage received. Okay. Alright. Arch passive. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Increases HP by 80% for all party members. And that's max HP. So that's going to be a lot. Uh, let's see. Every time Envy uses the first skill or the second skill, additionally, decrease all. Okay, what's it? Okay, so it just does the same thing as this, basically. But, yeah. Anywho. Additionally, decrease AoE attacks by 22% for all enemies. Excluding bosses. Sex of the 10 time decreases enemies attack for 24 seconds upon using the third skill. Increases received damage stops them by reviving oh stops them from reviving or from receiving heals okay that's not that bad to be honest but that's only to one enemy if it was like to the full party that would be insane but to be honest taking one part opponent out is really damn nice can I be removed additionally increases HP for all party members by 240 percent jeez can't wait to see how much HP that is and see how the whole team just tanks everything all right infinity uses the third skill upon entering the battlefield counter attacks AoE attacks using this skill wait hold up so this skill can be used by default with infinity ignores def ignores immunity and evasion so basically anybody using aoe's will automatically get countered and receive a seal and absorbs and along with this basically screw your healing and she becomes invincible for five seconds. The invincibility cannot be removed using piggyback, which is the second skill. Grants immunity to yourself and one other party member blocks buffs removal one time. So if anybody tries to steal buff, it blocks it for one time. Um, this lasts for 12 seconds, cannot be removed. Also increases single target damage and decreases AOE damage for all party members. Um, each affinity increases single target damage, decreases AOE damage, decreases AOE damage for all enemies. You only take 10% oh you only take 10% damage from an attack versus your uh, max HP uh, well then I could definitely say <laughs> if he is really damn strong once she gets infinity for sure if you give her infinity she's gonna be a nightmare in freaking arena like hands down that's just a straight-up nightmare in arena so basically, in a nutshell, if you hit her with an AoE, she's going to counter with her third skill, which basically gives you a seal and drains 50%, I think, right? When it's enhanced, I think it's 50%. Or did I miss something? Oh yeah. Which drains 50% and increases single target, which stacks up again. So that basically is giving us more single tam ah. It's basically giving us more single target damage the more you AoE. So basically having a full on AoE team or anybody with AoE is not good. You need a full on single target team for Envy. 
or you're just gonna cause chaos for yourself. Well, you're not gonna be doing much damage to them with um, AoE, but you're definitely gonna need it for uh, PvP. So if you're going up against the Envy, go with a full single target team. Then you won't receive any of these like annoying effects. Seems like every enhancement just buffs the shit out of the third skill. It makes it insane. She doesn't re she doesn't revive or anything like that, but she does stop people from reviving and giving the whole team extra HP to where they survive longer. And she heals more of that max HP every time. So she's just going to constantly heal everybody for that insane amount of HP that they have just from her being Arch. But she really shines at Affinity. So just keep that in mind. All right, so Golden Dragon Meta's Adventure Book Event System? Add Sage Ring Crafting Event. Can craft it by collecting shards from the Meta's event. Okay, so Midas is coming back. Or Metis. Midas? Metis? It's been a while since he's been here. I forgot how to say it. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Collect the book fragments to complete the adventure book. The adventure book can be acquired by playing and acquiring from the trade post by Midas coins. There are three books with nine different fragments. So it's basically like puzzle, like a puzzle event. With three sage events to acquire effect. Okay, so you want to collect all the rings from each of these. And once you get three of those different rings, it opens up an effect that you can use. So basically like any other ring in the game that has like a set. A trophy chest that can be acquired has where... Oh, so basically he has a chance of dropping like chests, like treasure chests, and they have a chance of getting these... Okay, not have bad of drops. Still a normal chest he has, basically, to be honest. So we get a free Infinity Summon once this update goes up, and all these are ending. So yeah, that's basically it. All right. Ah. Uh. Alright, so time to get into the whole tier list talking thing. So the reason I'm trying to make this tier list is just to help out returning and new players. Uh, so I'm hoping that some of you guys will actually join in and try to help. At least try and help. Because, you know, you never know if you can have a friend who comes back into the game. And I'm trying to keep Dragon Blaze going as long as we can, to be honest. That's why I've played it so much. That's why I'm keeping it on the channel into the end just because I really enjoy Dragon Blades. I love this game. I've been playing it since basically nearly the start of it. This is my very first first mobile game ever and I want to try and keep it alive as much as I can. So with this I'm trying to help out new players and old players returning to stay a little bit longer as much as we can and help them out. With that said I have finished my site Basically everything is published and out right now. So vo version 0.4 is out. Um, so to get to like the tier list once it goes up, this is what we've been working on for like exactly three hours yesterday on stream. Getting the site ready and everything. So once votings go through, we will also have all of this. And I will personally put all the like details and stuff. I already have everything saved towards my um, Photoshop so I can change it and just switch them out. <sighs> so this site will be down in a link in the description. And I'm also done with the whole voting thing as well. So this will go up as soon as this video goes up and you guys can go through here voting through the tier list.
So the first page is Death Crown. Whenever the lag will stop. Thank you for that. So first page is Death Crown. All the way down to Great Soul. So we're doing um, the Dracos first. So once we're done with the Dracos for the next week or two, then we're gonna move on to the um, Angelics. Then we're gonna move on to the next faction over and over again as much as we can. You know, we're gonna take our time because mostly the, the characters won't be released like extremely fast. So we have plenty of time to catch up. So sooner or later we will catch up to where the current characters are. I'll just try to, you know, leave it out for like at least a week or two just so we can get enough data collected. Then I'll end the response. So right now, turn this on, getting the actual like link and stuff. So with that said, thank you guys for watching and do make sure to vote and help out as much as you guys can. Uh, these are also, I also want you guys to look at this from Exalted experience, not from just normal transcendence. Look at it from Exalted. That is very important that you look at it through Exalted. Just because people are going to be, you know, thinking to themselves, oh, transcendence aren't that good. For those of you new players, I know you guys are going to be thinking of it through transcendent, but think of it as exalted rank when you get your affinity cards and infinity them. Think of it through exalted to infinity. Please. Just want that to be known. So with that said, I hope you guys enjoyed and will help out. And to then, peace out. Got to lose.